Hi, I'm Joshua Farley. And I'm Marcus Soto. And this is Inside Our Industry. Where we share weekly insights on everything to do with the electric and solar industry, contracting, and best practices. We're going to talk about line side connections today. You can just chat. Somebody asked us about our opinion on line, line side taps, line side connections, but um, we'll, we'll just really quick, we'll touch on what the industry standard is. It's a load side connection, right? So yep. here, here we got a load side connection. Solar comes out through the inverter and then back to the service panel, the AC service panel. So it's got a breaker. It's got a breaker there. It's a load, that's the load side connection. It's on the load side of the... Yep. of the service. Pretty much it's just the solar system feeding a back feed breaker that's inside your electrical panel and there's certain codes you have to, certain things you have to do to make sure sizing is okay with that. But um, all of your all of your electrical work is you got line side, load side, you know, line side, load side. So if this is a main breaker you got your line side and your load side. Anything on the on the loads, the loads are what where the power is going to yep. for them to Pull, pull current from? So the line side or the supply side is pretty much just the utility side of the main breaker or the overcurrent protection device. Yeah. So anything from this, that direction is considered line side or supply side. So when we see that, um, we see line side, I mean, this is a line side tap. Mm -hmm. I mean, so we see line side taps. Some of them have more stringent policies than others. Yep. Um, as long as you're rated and you have your overcurrent protection device, I don't see any problem with it. Yeah, it's not. It's it's not an issue by any means. Sometimes we have to do it because this electrical panel isn't rated for what we need it to be for the size of the solar system. Is typically why we're doing a line side tap. Um, and there's just there's just different codes that you have to abide by when you do that. Well, on the rating, right? The codes create mm -hmm. the create our rating and our gauge and all the all the over, all the protection devices. The NEC tells us exactly what we have to do. Yep. So you can't take 200 amps of solar here and have 200 amps of power coming in here without a protection device here because that'll be 200 potentially 200 amps coming one way, 200 amps coming the other way, and if this is 200 amp rated. There's a potential for going over that rating, and then you have issues. Yep. Um, as long as you keep your your rating in place, like if they didn't have a main breaker here, we would have to put one in, more than likely because the you know, reason we're going around this panel is because we wanted something more than what the panel will allow us. Yep. And as far as the process goes, line side taps are a little more difficult as far as the process because typically, from if any if you're working down here, you can shut this breaker off. To, to work on things safely. But up here, these wires are live coming from the utility. So typically we have to have this meter pulled so mm -hmm. that those wires aren't live anymore. And that's, and the t that's a utility disconnect. More is, to, they pull the meter, like, right. kind of like when they used, to, they used to, before smart meters, you didn't pay your bill, they come out and yank that thing, put a cap in there and yeah. no power, sorry. Yeah. Um, and then we have to <laughs> we have to coordinate that with the city because all of the the work or the tap itself and the inspection from the the city has mm -hmm. to be done all at the same time or the utility is not turning the power back onto that, that correct location. so i mean so, so there's a, a little bit more work a little bit more engineering but yeah. I, I think a line side tap has its place in solar um i i know that a lot of different places have have uh, worse environments or I guess have more incentive to do a line side tap. Like California has some issues, like depending on the kind of kind of pa panel boards they were using. I remember yeah. like I heard a story that there was, you know, uh, center fed, we had center fed break, oh, uh, center fed yeah. panels where the main breaker was in the center mm -hmm. and people were changing them out so much so that they were like, I think they were like, they replaced 2000 of these panels because there wasn't no, there was no allowance in the NEC to allow a back fed breaker on a, to, on a center fed panel because of the potential and the buzzing. But now those allowances are, are in here. Yep. So they've, they've gone through and changed it and it's changing every day. Um, so it's just a waste of money and resources and all those like to do that. But I think that they have issues with the, the amount or the size of the system. So right. talk about the size of the system here. And we can only speak of Arizona because that's the utilities we deal with. Yeah, but I, I just wanted to bring up this the electrical panel. You were talking about the services there for a second. But um, there are panels that have a built-in tap location. That's oh, right. typically Solar what we use. Solar yeah. ready? Solar ready well, panels. 
I've seen somebody say solar ready and it's just a 225 amp bus right with That's a 200 amp main but you're right it's a separate it's got a separate yeah. we use one from square D pretty much that has a location <laughs> up here they sell a kit for it that we can tap into the line side of that electrical panel got it easily it just makes it a lot easier there's just lugs you put in there obviously you still shut the power off to make that tap but it makes it real quick easy square D makes a good one yeah, and all that's done really with permits and engineering these yeah. days. You really can't get the utility involved. Um, I know guys out there with meter keys and they're doing stuff on the sides and, and whatever, but like you can't get those meters out without having the utility involved. And you can't get the utility involved without city involved and you can't get the city involved without permits and engineering, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I don't have, we don't have a problem with line side taps at all. And in fact, some some of the places here in in Arizona, APS was doing like a line side tap up here. Yeah. Um, and there were there was a program where APS was paying were paying some of their homeowners, uh, some of their customers, a monthly fee to put solar on their roof to send solar back to the grid in places where they needed more power, I guess. Yeah. So pretty much in that there would be another meter between the solar and the tap so that APS could watch exactly how much was being created by that solar Well, system. yeah, we need meters in here to watch the solar. It's just not in this diagram. I pulled this one off the of Google real quick just to talk, but right. every, everything's got to be uh, metered, right? So you can't talk about net metering or who, yeah. who used what power without being able to know where the power came from. Right. Um, and if you put solar in your house, you're gonna, want, you're gonna want a meter so you can tell the utility, hey, this is how much my solar is pro producing. Yeah. Um, so you can hold your ground against them. Um, I don't know if that answers your question, but uh, we don't mind it. Yeah. As long as it's covered, as long as you do the work by the NEC, I'm, I'm good with it. Yep. 